Hello everyone. So in today's video, I'll be talking about how to clear the techno managerial round and uh, we will discuss in detail about what is techno managerial round, why there is need of techno managerial round and how you should prepare for this techno managerial round in order to maximize your chances of getting selected. So I'll be sharing my screen and I just have a small PPT which will uh, which will just tell us the agenda of today's uh, session and then we will start it. All right. So, see, uh, the first step is to understand why do we need the techno managerial round? Because, see, techno managerial now round is basically a round where you will get the combination of technical question as well as the managerial question. Earlier, uh, when I started my career, there was technical rounds, there were separate technical rounds, and there was separate managerial round. There was no thing as no such thing called the techno managerial round. But nowadays, techno managerial round is a kind of must. Uh, thing and in every company there are technical managerial rounds because the reason is that most of the managers or most of the people who are in the leadership are now the technical architects or understand the technology or participate actively in the you know product design and all the uh, project development phase so they understand the technology and that is why we have techno managerial round it's a round where you will get combination of technical question as well as the managerial question and the actual percentage depends upon company to company and person to person. But in a typical scenario, you will get 50-50 or 60-40 uh, in scenarios or somewhere 40-60 scenario depends on company. So if you're going for a company like Deloitte, you will have a 70% of technical questions as well in a techno managerial round. But whereas if you go for a company like Wipro or Cognizant, you may have around 50% of technical question and 50% of managerial question. Okay. So... This is what a techno managerial round is and that is what uh, uh, it is called. And if we talk about the expectation in the techno managerial round, first thing is that you should always prepare technically really well for the techno managerial round. Your expectation is should be uh, that you will get technical questions. And this is a technical round where you will get a couple of managerial questions. Never treat it as a plain managerial round because there will be technical questions. There will be people who will judge you on the, your, your development skills. Uh, most of the time you will not get to write something on on uh, technical problems or they will not ask you to write a trigger or LWC code, but they will definitely be talking about technical things like what are the best practices for Apex trigger, what are the best practices for test classes, what are the Apex design pattern, what are the different different trigger frameworks you have worked on. So there will be a couple of technical questions and that should be clear in your mind that this is a technical round where I could get a couple of managerial questions, but you should be prepared for the technical things as well. That's the expectation part. And then <clears throat> the third step is that you should understand the interviewer as well. See, somebody who's going to take your interview uh, by his introduction, if you can develop the ability to understand how technically deep he can ask or what uh, technical side he has worked on in a particular project then you can mold your uh, the way you're saying all those things let's say he's some if he's somebody who is actively participating in every sprint and doing the solutioning and designing then he is somebody who is working very actively on a on a technical solution and he's a technical architect then you should be able to tell more about the technical solutions you have done you should tell more about the best practices you should tell about more day-to-day -day problems you face and everything he'll be able to understand all of your technical jargons and all of your uh, technical language whereas if he is somebody who is a project manager but he is not very actively involved in the project he do understand that okay this is the development phase this is the planning phase this is the testing phase and he understand that how a project work but he is not very uh, you know familiar with all the technical details inner details of a project then there is no you know point of explaining the trigger framework or the design pattern because that will not be you know very fruitful for that interviewer as well as for you so in that case you can explain you know how delivery works and how you you know uh, handle agile methodology in your project how you handle different different phases how long your development phase goes on then how testing works how you do the deployment what are the different different deployment mechanism you follow what are the problems you face in the deployment so depending on the interviewer you can change or you can modify your answer to enhance your chances of getting selected and to make the 
proper impression with the interviewer. That is what the part is called the adjust the intro introduction part. So if you understand the interviewer, your introduction can be in a way that it will impress the interviewer most. But if you're not able to understand, that is not a mandatory step. It's like you can go ahead with your normal introduction. Make sure that it is not a technical round, um, not core technical round. So uh, you have to adjust your introduction a little bit in a way that it your introduction should cover all the things related to project, not only about uh, technical things. I mean, it should be a combination of technical and managerial things. And that's how you're going to modify your introduction part as well. And you can also include a couple of managerial things you have done in your project, like, like how you worked as a team to deliver a critical project, which was time intensive and which was, you know, boundary intensive and all those managerial things. If you are running something in the community or if you are doing a training of uh, your employees or something, which involves your leadership skills or managerial skills, you can definitely include that as well. And that will also be an added advantage for you. And then comes the project explanation part. See, project explanation part is the core of the techno manager round. The way you explain your project will definitely decide the next set of questions and definitely will decide if you are going to make it or not. So project explanation should be perfectly fine. Um, you should have the combination of what are the things you have done, your roles and responsibility in the project, and then how the project work on the company level as well. Like, like you can explain it in a way that it was an agile project where we had two weeks of sprint and one week was for the development and the next three days were for the testing. The last day was for the deployment and then the, the final day was for the hypercare where we, you know, kind of used to monitor all those sprint. On the final day of our sprint, we used to decide what are the user stories we used to uh, we are going to take in the next sprint and during the development week while the developers were working on the development, the testers were doing the uh, test script creation part and business analysts were working on the user stories which they are going to you know take in the next sprint. They were trying to create the user stories and all those things. So that is how your whole project was working and then how deployment was managed, whether you were using good Git or CI CD tools, whether you were using the DevOps center or the chain sets or the other tools available like Copado or Flossom. So you should explain everything properly in this round. See, this round is more about you explaining things rather than interviewer asking things. Interviewer will obviously ask a couple of questions, but it is more about how you explain all those things. And then they, obviously there will be a couple of cross, cross questions. Your roles and responsibility is extremely important in this round. So you need to make sure that you have clear definition of what were your role in this project and what responsibilities you have played and whether you have gone beyond those responsibility and have played some extra part in any of those activities or not, whether you were doing any peer review or whether you were also helping testers to do QA or whether you were also helping BAs to make sure that user stories are properly technically filled and all the acceptance criteria are fine or not. So it depends on you, how you explain your roles and responsibility but it should include all the things you are doing i'm not saying that you should lie about your roles and responsibility you should not lie obviously but you should include all the things you are doing you should include that and obviously plan it properly so that in the introduction you do not forget those things and then there will be a couple of question and answer quick fire round. He will be asking questions you will be answering most of these questions will be related to the deployment related to your project explanation if he's somebody who is a technical architect or actively work on the development then obviously he will ask a couple of questions related to design pattern best practices order of executions why test classes are required what are the different types of errors you have received what are the most difficult scenarios you have worked on your recent implementation your recent problem where you faced a roadblock all those things you can expect in this round and uh, this round will basically, uh, you know, determine your, uh, your chances of getting selected or not. So make sure that you explain all these things properly, all the uh, scenarios you have worked on different, different errors. You can explain all those. So if he is a technical person, he will understand whatever you will say, like you have got a heap size issue or CPU timeout issue, your null pointer exception, call out issues, call out exceptions, async exceptions, he'll be able to understand everything. So if you determine he's a, he's a technical person, you can explain all these things as well if he's asking. Otherwise, if he's just a managerial person or if he's a person who is a technical person but not very actively involved in a day-to-day -day project, then you can skip this part or there will not be question from these, but you should be prepared for those. And then at the end, you should, uh, you know, close your interview with the, uh, with the, 
positive note by asking a couple of questions from him. So obviously he'll ask you that, do you have any question for uh, him or not? So you can uh, ask a couple of logical questions. If it is a product based company, you can ask about their product, how they're using Salesforce, how Salesforce fit in in their product setup. Or if it is a service-based company, you can ask a couple of questions related to their project pipeline, how the project allocation work, what is the roadmap for a Salesforce consultant there or Salesforce developer there, how they become architects in that company or what kind of projects they have, what is the expectation from somebody like you is giving the interview. So those kind of logical questions you can ask. The the good, uh, the good best thing you can do uh, for on this round is that you do some research about the company as well so that if they ask a couple of managerial questions like why do you want to join us or why are you looking for a change, you can, you know, tell about uh, some details about the company and that will basically give you more content about these rounds. So make sure you prepare everything. If you have any question related to this, feel free to ping me on LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.